Hi there, this is Phil Simba, USBGF Teaching Pro, and I have another interesting position. This is a cube action problem. Red is on roll, holding a two cube, and it's a uh, unlimited or money game. And the question is, should red redouble? And if red redoubles, of course, should blue take or pass? Uh, before I in introduce my guest commentator, why don't you decide what you would do with this position, and then we'll uh, have my surprise guest tell you what he thinks and why. So what would you do? If you're red, would you redouble? And if you were blue, would you take or pass? Okay, this is another position that came up in a few wet that uh, some very fine players got wrong. So I sent it to uh, uh, my favorite uh, analysts, and one of them is Victor Ashkenazi from New York, one of the top players in the world, and uh, he always offers some great insights and has donated his time to the USBGF. Victor, why don't you tell us about this position and what you think? Uh, it's actually a very interesting position, and uh, especially in the money game, uh, because it seems like, you know, with red, you know, had some good things happen to them in the last few rolls they hit. Uh, they can, uh, you know, they have a potentially good position, you know, and many people will be, you know, will be urged to uh, recube here because uh, red does have a, you know, like I said, have a good potential in their game. They have four-point board. They have a blot on the deuce, which they can cover with uh, 20, I think, 24 numbers. And, uh, you know, in blue, uh, though have still pretty strong position, they have extra check on the deuce point. But uh, I, I would not cube this uh, yet uh, because uh, I don't think uh, red just have enough at this point. I said 24 numbers cover cover deuce point. Uh, but uh, if if uh, you know we roll any of the uh, 14 numbers that don't, you know that uh, blue have 20 numbers to come in and 11 of them would be hitting. And my, my, my guessing would be that blue wins more, many more gamins in this position than, than red does. And red have a lot, of, a lot of work to do. They have three checkers, four checkers total, but three checkers really deeply behind uh, blue, broke, and prime. It might take, you know, some time before they, they can come around. Blue may come in, you know, even if red makes the deuce point, uh, blue can, can come in with, you know, with ace later and still easily win the game because red just have to, to you know too much work to do you, you can see even the keep count difference it's 131 uh, versus 95 it's just it's huge so red really really need to cover the deuce point uh, in this position uh, to recube or at least have uh, another checker come around and uh, you know have to triple maybe uh, you know Triple coverage for reduced point and uh, and not be uh, not be stuck with three four checkers be, you know be, behind the prime even if it's a broken prime uh, in order to recube. I mean there are some bad numbers like double five you know and uh, that break your board and in general you know you, with positions like that you have to see uh, how next uh, one or two rolls played out you know and see uh, how that position will progress you know before you you recube just. I don't think Red is that much of a favorite equity-wise in this game yet to, to give it a cue. Okay, thank you. Uh, you mentioned one thing that if, if Red had a checker up and stuck, I, I looked at this. I put a checker here and rolled it out, and this is a tiny double, just barely a double with this checker out here because, like you said, now you can play a bunch of numbers. You're not stuck as much. And in addition to the direct cover, you get some nines from here. Uh, well, no, you don't get a six three. Or, yeah, you get a six three. You no, you had threes. So you really don't get any additional cover. It's just not being stuck uh, by being here. So that point was is very good. Go ahead. Yeah, and just with this checker here, have much more freedom and uh, you know much less numbers to 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 get crushed. And they are just their position, you know, much more advanced. They're they're have additional, to, you know, additional checker to play with. They couple of rows, they may build the bar or, or, you know, just cover the juice already, and much less chance they're gonna get, you know, they're gonna uh, uh, roll some crushing number, you know, to crush their own position. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it is a better position. But even, even here, you know, I would be very hard pressed to 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 recube. I mean, depends on the opponent, of course, always. But of it's, course. Uh, you know, 
It's uh, you know. It's, here's what it's here's what happened finished. over the over the board. This is very interesting because in the Chouette, and I don't remember exactly who was where. We had we have a we have pretty good players in our Chouette. There are all open players, and and the the player on roll did not redouble. And later, the other player said, boy, did you miss a redouble? I was passing. And the interesting thing is, of course, it's right to redouble if you can get a pass 25% of the time, you gain enough equity. That's what this number means. But any good player uh, who sees this properly is not about to pass this. It's not even close to a double. But you can understand why if you're red and you're sitting here, and, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, if you're blue and you're sitting here, and your opponent is thinking about doubling, you're not comfortable in this position. You're not happy. It does look like he's going to cover almost all the time, and it does look like you could get trapped and be in big trouble. And if you're only looking at all the bad things that can happen to you, and, of course, you've already uh, our bad thing has already happened to you, as Victor said, at some point in this game, Blue gave Red the cube, and he was certainly in a much better position than this, so it must have gotten much worse for Blue since he gave the cube, and he's getting a little depressed and he's getting a little worried, and now he's thinking he might even drop this cube. Well, you have to look at it from both sides. If you stop and think, if I were red here, maybe I don't even have a double. Look at all the things that could go wrong for me. So you have to look at it from both sides in order to see the glasses half empty and the glasses half full. Now, some people would argue, well, if you got human beings that would drop this cube, it's right to double. Well, yeah, if you know he's going to drop, of course it's right to double, but you're taking a monstrous gamble, and according to this, you're giving away about 25% when you turn that cube. If he does take, you're giving away a tremendous amount of, of extra equity. So you've got to look at it from that standpoint. Uh, one of the things that uh, I am very, uh, uh, I like a lot to use in these positions, if I were uh, blue, uh, I use what I call is reverse Wolsey's Law. You all know what reverse what Wolsey's Law is. You put yourself in your opponent's shoes and you ask yourself if you think your opponent would take or drop. And if you're not sure, you go ahead and give them the cube. Well, reverse Lucy's law is, is very similar. If you're the one that's being doubled, you ask yourself, are you sure that if you were him, you would double? And if the answer is no, I'm not sure I would double if I were him, then for sure you have a take. So that's another way to use that, that forces you to see the position on the other person's side. So you're looking at both sides of the board. Way, way too much. When, when you're the red player, you're never really thinking about what does it feel like to be blue? And when you're the blue player, what does it feel like to be red? So this will force you to, to look at it from both sides and help you make better decisions. Uh, Victor, anything else to say about this particular position? Uh, no, not just position, but your comment you know, about the, sh you know, the shred and how people react to certain uh, situations over the board. You know, in general, I think it's one of the most common mistakes people make, especially in the shred, is when they get hit, they, they, they pass uh, takes or even, or even no, no cubes or, you know, very often because psychologically they, are, you know, they just hit them. They, you know, it's, it's hard for them to swallow that they got hit you know, in a good position. And, uh, oh, yeah. On up and on the opposite side, I feel like people who, who actually hit from underdog position uh, very often uh, recube way too early just because of the positive feeling that they get from hitting. They just over uh, overestimate their position, like you know, like m what may happen here if uh -huh. this person with red would, would double. You know, I think it works both ways, but I think it's one of the most common uh, you know errors that you're gonna see in the shred. Oh yeah, and it's not just about hitting any time. I roll a joker, and I see my opponent's shoulders slump and he gets depressed. I know he's going to drop the cube or more likely to drop the cube. And any time he rolls uh, uh, dances on a one- or two-point board, I can flip the cube out there and get a drop three times as often as I'm supposed to. But that used to be more the case. Now, I, unfortunately, my chouette has better players and everybody's getting smarter. So I don't, I don't uh, double or, or, or I don't double anymore on the basis of what I'm guessing somebody might, what, what mistake people might make because they're making fewer and fewer mistakes. But it's happening. And But the first thing is, regardless how the opponent plays, regardless of the fact that maybe you'll get a drop 25% of the time, you need to first learn what's right, assuming you're playing Victor, who's not going to drop this cube. So assume you're playing Victor Ashkenazi every time and make your decisions that way. Then if you want to do some small adjustments because the guy across the table might 
be dropping when he shouldn't or might play the checkers a little bit worse if, when the game continues, then you can make those adjustments. But start off with the right with the right play. Victor, thank you very much for your time and donating your time to the USBGF, and we'll see you at more tournaments and and uh, and uh, more positions hopefully in the future. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye. Okay.